Hey everyone. Uh, in our last video, we were talking about this really exciting thing that we've seen going on, and it's this big resurgence in interest in handcraft and learning hand tool woodworking and, and how to make things with simple tools. Um, and that that resurgence has been growing rapidly. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought <laughs> that a pandemic, something like that, one of the things that would come out of it would be a people, a lot of people saying, you know, how can I do something with my hands. We heard from so many people going hiking, learning how to bake sourdough bread. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, if, if you want to think of it as like a silver lining, um, that is, is a real uh, exciting thing to us to see people wanting to choose to engage with life. Um, so we've been uh, doing everything we can uh, up to this point. You know, leading up to that, we were publishing the magazine. We've been uh, doing our own books, instructional videos. We're on the podcast and the blog we're trying to just basically give everything we can to try to help people uh, learn how to use their hands and use hand tools um, but we realized that you know, we've had in-person classes few people at a time but we're just we can only do so much so we're trying to figure out how we can connect with more people and help them along their journey uh, even more so we've been trying to find this middle way yeah how can we how can we find the benefits of both video and the, the mentorship of, of in person. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, we talked about the value of YouTube and things in the way that it allows you to slow down and, and zoom in, so to speak. The camera can get right in on action. But we've also found and heard uh, that a lot of people's struggles come from the fact that that social media, what it perpetuates is, is kind of the endless scroll. Yeah. You, you go looking on Instagram or Facebook or, or YouTube for inspiration, uh, but you get stuck there. You get stuck. It's kind of a paralysis of too much information, too much knowledge, too many mm -hmm. people doing things. And uh, you can get just drowned in, in a sea of, of videos and information and photos and things like that. Yeah. So we really want to focus on the value of a mentor, of uh, guidance, of one-on-one -on -one guidance and um, really personalized guidance in this journey. I mean, I've, I've had that experience um, with, I remember when I was in school learning how to do uh, furniture refinishing work and, you know, learning how to brush shellac. There's, uh, Mike, he learned varnish, uh, and so he had this background in boat varnishing, and I had more, uh, I had some of that, but really the thing was shellac that I knew. Mm. And it was funny, when we were, uh, when you were learning shellac, we were going back and forth about it, you were saying it's just so different. It's yeah. a different technique. Yeah. To have this different wrist motion and technique, um, you know, you can watch a video and see that, but also you do need to have someone available that as you try it, you gotta be able to say, why is this not working this way? And you say, okay, try this. Okay, well now it's doing this. Okay, try this. And that is a really important thing. I know when I was in school, um, you know, my instructor did the demonstration that's great, but then I went back to my bench and it just didn't work the same way. Right. And so it was the opportunity to be able to reach out and say, hey, why isn't this working? That I found for me, that was a, a big important thing for success in that handcraft of shellacking. And it's the same with woodworking. <clears throat> yeah, So, and along with that mentorship angle is, is the other side of it, which is regular practice. Really incorporating craft into your everyday daily life you know, so often uh, we get caught in this kind of weekend warrior thing where mm -hmm. where maybe Saturday or maybe every other Saturday we get the chance to go down to our benches and we we have to figure out like where we put our tools and, and what needs to be done. And and it is not a regular cycle in our lives. Yeah. Um, and so I always think of the example that Bill Copperthwaite talked about. He said in processing his year's firewood supply, he'd spend five minutes a day with his crosscut saw and his ax splitting. And five minutes a day got him his firewood supply. I think an approach like that is really valuable yeah. in looking at it, not in an overwhelming way, but it's just a little bit of time every day. Yeah, exactly. Makes a big difference. My, my wife teaches piano and she tells her students the same thing. You know, uh, you know how, how kids are. <laughs> it's the day before the lesson and they cram and they try to do, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes right before the lesson. And we all know that doesn't work. 
And that's kind of like what we do in our shops is we, we don't have enough time in our lives. We're so busy and because we want to do three hours at a time. And so we wait for that Saturday that we can, you know, block out for it and then we fill it up and we just feel like we're not making any progress. Um, but my wife tells her students, you know, if you just took five minutes a day, mm. every day, you're going to be that much further along than if you just wait for when you, when you can really make the time. And I think that's the thing that's been impressed on us that um, any day we miss just making some shavings, doing something, it makes it that much harder to yeah. get back going. But um, it's, it's really pretty amazing. I think a lot of people, it's counterintuitive because I think the piano students, they think five minutes a day isn't right. enough. Yeah. I need at least 45 minutes if I'm really going to make progress. But that's just not actually how it works. That's yeah. the great news is that you don't need you know, massive chunks of time. You just need regular practice. And as you do a little bit here, you walk away and you can mull it over and yeah. think about it and then come back and try again. And it's not so concentrated and disjointed from the rest of life. Yeah, it's really about cultivating a habit. It's yeah. about making it a part of your everyday consciousness. Yeah. This handcraft and your bench and your bench is at the ready and you know where you left things. <laughs> and so it becomes so much easier and more efficient and your skills can increase much more quickly. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I, I think a lot of people uh, feel that uh, they say, well, yeah, sure, that would be great <laughs> if I could do woodworking every day. Uh, but the real key here is that it's a, a brief amount of time. It's a mm -hmm. smaller commitment. Um, and so we feel that pain. You know, we have a lot of responsibilities with Mortis and Tendon, a lot of email to do and editorial work and stuff. So it's not like we can spend all day long making wood shavings either. Uh, so we feel that same thing. Um, and so we want to, uh, in the next video, talk about um, how we can help to get over that hurdle. As we've struggled through it, you know, we got kids we're raising, uh, uh, both of our families homeschool. So we're just pretty involved with a lot of stuff. And it is hard to get that time in. Uh, so our next video, we want to talk about that a little bit to figure out how can we overcome that hurdle to just commit those five or ten minutes a day or half an hour a day or whatever you can fit in. Uh, how you can do that. Yeah, and we want to hear from you. Uh, let us know how your woodworking is worked into your daily life. Is, does it feel disjointed? Do you feel like you're living for every other Saturday when you have a few hours? Or <laughs> yeah. have you found a way to make regular bench time a, a common practice in your life? Yeah, and I think the word that stuck in my head is habit. Yeah. You know, because you can... It, we, we are creatures of habit. You yeah. know, we operate according to what we've established. And so if we have a habit of not going down to the shop, mm -hmm. we're not going to go down to the shop. That, and we're we, going to scroll on YouTube and find woodworking videos. Yeah, exactly. But if we do have a habit of uh, making, and there's a time in our day where we say, this is when I go down to the shop, that's going to become this, this daily thing that it becomes, it's the path of least resistance. It's easier and more natural feeling just to go and just yeah. to do it. Um, so I think that's going to be the thing that is super valuable. How can you overcome this hurdle? Yeah, one of our readers sent us a, a funny anecdote. She said that um, she, you know, is raising kids and she said in order to get her shop time in at the end of the day, she puts her kids down and then she puts her boots on. And she said, even if she gets, you know, distracted with something else yeah. in the evening, she has her boots on and knows that means she's got to go into her shop. Yeah. So like incorporating things like that, that, that is key to yep. generating a totally. good habit to get into your shop and get that work in. Yeah, so are you working on that habit? Are you trying to figure out uh, ways to incorporate that daily? Uh, we wanna hear comments. Uh, yeah. Let us know what, what you're up to. Yeah.